So continuing with question number 21 and this is more of an extension to the web part section itself. How can we create a custom editor for web part? Before I start with this tutorial, uh, the fundamentals of this tutorial is based on the previous questions where we discussed about web part basics. So in case you are not aware of the web part basics, I would advise that you can you should go through those questions first and then come to this uh, session. Okay. Uh, so in the previous session, we discussed about uh, how we can uh, basically create web part. And if you have noticed that, you know, SharePoint environment by default created a web part editor. Now, uh, there are situations in project, you know, where you would like to create your own custom editor for the web part. Probably you want to drop down, probably you want to display something. So basically, in other words, you want the editor of the web part to be something which is custom or uh, should be something you know which uh, uh, is is very much specific to the project so in those scenarios you know you would like to build a custom editor for the web part and uh, this question basically concentrates on the same we will first try to understand that what we are trying to build so so that you know we are able to better understand uh, that how we can build up a custom web part editor so what we are trying to build here is a simple uh, customizable label and this label can be customized from two aspects. One is the font size and one is the label data. So in other words, the label text what you see here. So a user can go and say, okay, I want to change the font size to 10 and I can, you can just say that, okay, you can go and change the label text and say apply. By doing this, he's basically able to customize this label. Now the customization is achieved by using this label web part editor, which is nothing but your custom web part editor. So in this uh, answer, we will try. We will be trying to build this web part editor step by step. In order to create a custom web part editor, it's a four-step procedure. The first step is that we definitely need to create the web part. The second thing is that we need to decorate the properties of the web part class with web browsable as false. So let's see that how basically this looks practically. So Here's our web part class called a simple label web part. And then we are inheriting from the web part class, which basically belongs to system.web.ui web part, uh, web controls.web parts namespace. And as our project needs two properties, one is the font size and the other is the label data. So what I've done is I've kept two properties here, font size and label data. And then we have set and get, set and get uh, functions for the properties which we are defined okay as usual we decorate uh, with the personalizable attribute web display name web browsable attribute so that you know this can be exposed as a web part property uh, on the web part property when we are using the web part editor but now there's a slight change here as compared to the previous one we are specifying here the web browsable as false okay what does this signify this says to the web part environment or to the sharepoint environment that please don't use your custom editor. Please don't use your editor. We are going to use our custom editor. So it's like saying to the SharePoint web part environment or the framework that don't utilize your editor to uh, update customization information. We are going to have our own editor. So that's the first thing we need to do. After step one, there are two important steps which we need to complete. The first step is uh, basically the web part should specify saying that which editor it's going to use, you know, so that uh, the SharePoint environment can attach that editor with that web part. And the third step is that we need to create our own custom web part editor, which we are still not done. Okay. So let's first do the step two. Now, in order to uh, specify the editor, which this web part is going to use, we need to override the create editor parts method. So let's look how the source code looks practically. So this was our web part class we just we had just, we are just discussing and what we have done is we have overrided the create editor parts function uh, with uh, created we have overrided the create editor parts function and we have created the object of the web part editor added it to a editor parts collection and then basically returned from this function the editor part collection now what happens SharePoint in, uh, environment or we can say SharePoint web part framework basically queries this collection and says which web part editor are you going to use okay and this web part class 
then replies back saying that okay I'm going to use simple label web part editor and he has already specified here saying that he doesn't want to use uh, the custom editor or the sorry the editor defined by the SharePoint environment so this helps us to say that okay helps us to tell to the environment to the SharePoint web part environment that I don't want to use your editor and here in this editor part collection we are specifying that which web part we want to use or which web part editor we want to use okay now let's go to the second step in the second step we need to create this uh, create the custom web part editor now in the function we have specified that we are going to use new simple label web part editor class okay so here's our new simple web label web part editor class now in order to create a custom editor we need to first inherit from editor part class this class basically uh, belongs to uh, system.web.ui.webcontrols.webparts.editor.part.webparts uh, namespace okay now as we know that we have two properties here now in order to build up this simple label web part we need we need to define two text boxes right and we need to define two labels so that's what we have done here we have defined two text boxes and two labels so you can see that uh, the first text box is basically a font size and the second text box and the second label is for the font size description that is this description saying enter font size then we have a text box for label value and then again the label description okay now in the create child control method of the editor part we just create the object of the text boxes label boxes and add it to the controls collection and in this process we also specify that what the label value should be for example we have specified that the label value for font size should be enter font size so you can see that it's enter font size here in the same way we have said for the label description it should be enter label text so we have specified here you can see the display as enter label text right. now that we have uh, completed creating the editor part class or our custom editor there are two things which we have missed out or we can say there are two activities which basically takes place the first activities activity which takes place when you actually input a, a web part customization value is that the value goes to the web part editor and the web part editor then stores it into the content database now in order that this activity uh, is achieved we need to override the apply changes method in the custom editor custom web part editor so what I've done over here is that I have overrided the apply changes so in other words when a user basically inputs value to the customize uh, uh, to the web part customize for, for the web part customization this apply change is basically what it does is it just takes the data from the text boxes and applies it to the object object of the web part and this object you can get it from the this dot web part to edit uh, uh, this dot web part to edit uh, property right now the second uh, activity which takes place is basically we also need to sync the content database uh, uh, content database data with the web part so basically any uh, whenever probably your page starts or whenever your page is loaded your SharePoint page is loaded the web part editor basically needs to fetch information from the content database depending on the user and apply it to the web part so for that we need to override the sync changes value so what we have done is we have overrided in the in our custom edit uh, custom web part editor the apply the sync changes method and here we are moving the data from the web part object to the text box value so in this way our web part uh, is in sync with whatever we have so that's what all, all it is you know we need to create and definitely uh, one of the things which we need to do is that we need to change the web config file and add the web part to our gallery and this was already been covered in the web part basic so I'll not be covering it here so you can then see that how our web part basically works works you can see that this is what is the web part editor class display this is our web part class okay and then you can customize it to whatever you want whatever font size value you want you can customize the data of the label and say apply definitely when we talk about projects you know the web part editor the custom web part editor can become much complex than what we are seeing here 
but the base remains the same. So just let's revise what we have done. We have first created our web part class. We have specified the necessary properties. We ensured that the web browser is equal to false so that you know we tell to the SharePoint environment that please don't use your uh, web part editor. We are going to define our own. In the create editor parts collection, we created the object of the customizable web part editor which we are going to use for this web part. Then we created our web part editor class where we defined the necessary input UI objects. And we overrided two important things, two important uh, methods. One is the sync changes, which basically moves the data from the web part object, uh, from the web part uh, object to the web part editor, uh, web part editor uh, UI. And the another one, you know, where we are basically moving the data from the web part editor to the uh, object of the web part. So both of these things are important because one of them helps you to sync the changes while the other of them helps to apply the changes. So we overrided this. We also uh, in the create child controls, we created the object of our uh, input uh, UIs and uh, applied the appropriate uh, UI customization which we want so that you know we can see this label values and etc. And then we deployed the web part in a normal way by specifying the web.config file. And this has already been covered in the previous section. So we specified here as a safe control entry and then we added it to our web part gallery and now we can use this customizable web part editor. So these are the basic steps by which you can use uh, or, or I'll rather say that these are the basic four steps which you need to use in order to build up a custom web part editor.